out there. A pumpkin spice latte. Oh yeah, yeah. You know I love them. Oh, yeah. by the way, these Halloween decorations look so good. Thank you, thank you. I recently learned it's all about creating an atmosphere. Ah, uh, sure. Yeah. Oh, hey, Brett. All right. That is a shiny jacket. Oh yeah, it's a little chilly. So, I... wait a second. It's chilly out. There's Halloween decorations up, and I'm drinking a pumpkin spice latte. It's fall. That, that means winter is coming! Wow, it's really not that cold out right now. Right, it's just the beginning of October. I still have shorts on. Yeah. So, if you're anything like me, once it starts getting even a little bit chilly outside, you start mentally preparing yourself for how cold it's going to get in the depths of the winter. Uh, this year, some of those preparations can include thinking about how late you're going to ride into the season and what you can do to make sure you and your bike are ready for that to make it possible, safe, and fun. Uh, so first, let's check in with Gretchen at the service department. She can talk to us a little bit about getting our bikes ready. Hey everybody. So I wanted to touch on a few things that help you ride in the winter. Um, some things that I have on my bike all year round uh, are going to be the lights. I think it's super important to be able to be visible and be seen. Um, I always ride them on the blinky setting during the day so that the cars and everybody around can see me. During night, uh, I turn my front on just a steady mode so that it's a little bit easier to see the road in front of me. Um, but my back is always on a blinky mode just so that I can be seen. Other things, uh, fenders on my bike uh, all year long. It's really nice, no matter what the weather is, to be able to just jump on your bike and not worry about getting splashed and all gross. Um, and then, when it shifts over into true winter riding, there's a lot of options that you can do for your bike. The number one thing that's super easy to do is to put on some studded tires. Uh, there are tiny little studs inside of these little treads that make it super easy for riding through any sort of weather, especially ice and slush and gross weather. So now that your bike is ready to go, it's time to make sure that you are. Uh, most folks who have been through a cold season before know that it's all about layers. This is especially true on a bike because once you've been going for about 10 minutes or so, your body, especially your core and your legs, are going to start to really warm up. Uh, whereas some of your extremities, especially your hands that are right at the front of the bike and aren't moving very much, they're going to get colder over the course of the ride. Uh, now everyone's body is different uh, and everyone's cold tolerance is different So how you bundle up is going to be a little different person to person But here's just some ideas to get you started So to keep your head warm and dry all your layers are going to have to go either over or under your helmet obviously um, I use when it's wet, but not too cold out a waterproof rain jacket that fits over my helmet and then uh, different layers under the helmet and finally a warm winter jacket hood over that when it gets really cold when it's really frigid and my eyes start feeling cold, I also add goggles. So I commute all year round, and depending on how cold it is and how long my commute is, I'll wear a combination of everyday and cycling-specific clothing. Uh, what's nice about cycling-specific clothing is it's usually designed for, first, the riding position. So leaned over, tops will have a longer back to help keep you totally covered. Uh, if there's something with a hood, it'll be designed to go over a helmet. Uh, a lot of times there will be high-vis or reflective elements for longer and more serious rides where I'd normally wear a jersey and shorts during the summer. Uh, I'll start by just adding to that same outfit uh, leg warmers and arm warmers and then when it gets a bit colder I'll switch to a thermal jersey and thermal tights. I find that I have to work the least on warming up my legs because they're doing all of the work <laughs> but uh, when it's wet out, something like rain pants could be a really good idea, something waterproof or water resistant. Uh, and then when it gets really cold, either a long john or a thermal tight can really help keep you comfortable, especially on a longer ride. For gloves, uh, there's different thicknesses and warmths of different fingered gloves. And then when it gets really cold, I switch to what's called a lobster claw that keeps your fingers together so they can warm each other up. I have very small and very cold hands, so sometimes I'll even add a liner under that and wear a lighter glove inside the lobster claw. And then last but not least, your feet. You gotta make sure your toes don't get froze. Uh, so the first thing you can do is just switch to a nice thermal sock. Warmer sock is great for pretty much anything you're doing in the winter. Shoe covers will really help extend the life and utility of your cycling shoes. So they make waterproof ones, uh, thermal ones, just toe covers for when it's just chilly but not really cold. But then there are also some really great winter riding shoes out there, which are great for folks that are doing long distances or really frequent riding. Okay, so with all of that together, I'm ready for winter! You ready? Still 
walked over.